Welcome everyone to yet another Dive Talk video. Today we are celebrating not only that we hit a thousand subscribers, which is great, but also yes, we wanted thank to, you. yeah, we wanted to, um, you know, as a as a show, as a as a token of our appreciation, we have talked about in the past. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, we want to give away some lights. And a couple months ago, I'll show you this. A couple months ago, we received some lights from Orca Torch. These are Beautiful. brand new. Um, and you know, we wanted to review them and, and use them out. We took them to Beaufort spring, which yeah, is a super deep cavern. Great lights. Yep. And, uh, use them there and, and, and took some shots off that. But, um, we, as we promised, once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're going to give them away. So this yeah. is the video that is going to talk about how you can win these lights. So first of all, I wanted to, uh, go into our channel and kind of show you something because I want to give these away. The only way for me to know if the person that won this light is a subscriber is by looking at the comments in our YouTube studio. So right now you're looking at my screen right now. I know Woody, you can't see it, but uh, if you can see some of these comments, will have like a little red asterisk or a red icon there, and it says publicly subscribe to you. So that's how I know if you are publicly subscribed to Dive Talk. So you can see not all of the comments, a lot of the comments, of course, are from our subscribers. So thank you for that and questions and stuff. Um, but a lot of the comments like this one from Jesse, for example, love these videos. So entertaining. She is not publicly subscribed to Dive Talk. So because of that, you know, for the purpose of the contest, you need to make sure that you're publicly subscribed to Dive Talk. You have to show, like Shelly right here, uh, the subscription so you can win one of these lights. And once again, this will be 100% free. We'll even pay for shipping. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, we'll cover shipping. Uh, I'll send that over to you, whatever you are. So in this video, I want you to leave a comment that just says subscribe to Dive Talk. That's it. Perfect. You leave a comment, you publicly subscribe to us, and the comment has to say subscribe to Dive Talk. Um, and the reason for that is that the the solution or the machine we're going to use to figure out the winner, it randomizes people by the comment. So we will specify subscribe su subscribe to Dive Talk and then say select a random comment from this thing. And then if the person that is randomly selected also happens to be publicly subscribed to Dive Talk, you win the light. It's that easy, really. Free light. And they're very, very good lights. Yep. And we I, have four um, of them. We have four of them. I used all four actually in the water. Just wanted to test them. Overall, yeah. I'll do a review of them at another show. But overall, this is a solid light. Like when you hold it in your hand, you feel quality. Yes. Like the very first reaction, and I'm going to say this in my review, is okay, this is a solid device in my hand this is not like a flimsy like little a light little thing that's going to break easy okay so these are really good and they're i think they're pretty um popular out there in the for sure. dive tech world for yep. sure and by the way on the description of this video and we've been doing this on every video for the last couple of months we actually got i don't think if i share this with you a kit.com kit page that has all of our gear that we dive with. I wanted to share with everyone cool. our BCDs, uh, rebreathers, DPVs, like everything we dive. We listed it in one place. If you are curious about what gear we use, we put it in there with links to the manufacturer's page. So I didn't put it to a to a store or anything, unless oh, the manufacturer has awesome. a shop and they can just buy them directly from the manufacturer. But if you want to buy them cool. from your local dive shop, go ahead. And uh, you know, because we do get this question all the time. But what yes. BCD do you use? What regulator do you use? So we put them all on that page. You guys can check it out. By the way, yes. I just think it's very important to tell everybody because this is really pretty unique. You know, we don't get any commission or kickback from any manufacturer whatsoever. Nope. So. We're telling you the gear we love, and that's it, because we want to be an informative show, and we want to inform divers of what we think, in our opinion, is the gear that works right for us for a particular purpose. Just remember that each piece of gear we use is a tool for a purpose. So we may use one piece of gear for one thing and another piece of gear for another, but that's it. Yeah. That's our only motivation we will never, we will never ever recommend a product in this channel because we got paid to recommend a product no. in this channel. No chance. 
Um, so yeah, so the Orca Torch lights are going to go out. Uh, the way we're going to do it is like this. We're going to give them out one at a time. Every time we hit 500 subscribers going forward, so at 1,500, we're going to do another one. At 2,000, we'll do another one. And then at 2,500, we'll do another one. Um, I did some math, and over the last Hope month we don't run out of so, lights. Yeah, over the last month or so, we've been getting about 25 subscribers a day. So about every 20 days, we'll be giving these away. Although between like 800 and 1,000, I feel like we cover that within a couple days or so, like 50 subscribers a day. So who knows? We might be giving another one away next so. week. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. So we're going to give away uh, each one of these every time we hit 500. And just to make it even more fair, uh, we're going to do it. I'm going to try to do it on a... Um, on a live stream. So we're going to do it on a live stream. Oh, so that fun. way it's live. You know, we announce the winner and that's it. Very cool. So so that's how we're going to do it. But today, just to add a little bit more context to this video um, and add a little bit of length as well, because apparently we're unable to film videos that are <laughs> shorter than like 30 minutes. Um, I wanted to answer some of the questions and comments that our subscribers have left for us. Okay. Uh, over the last couple of months. You haven't seen any single one of these. I have not. I didn't share them with you, mainly because I put them together like 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> so but I had better seen some of these. Yeah. It's a real reaction that to the we'll, comment. That way we'll react to it live. So, um, yeah. So bear with us. So uh, Capalot, who's the name of the subscriber, asked, this is a pretty open-ended question, I feel like, would you help me get dive ready with everything I need? Okay. That's a very open-ended question. So here's, I'm not kidding you. And literally right after you asked the question, what popped into my mind? And this is what popped into my mind. Are you open circuit or are you closed circuit? I'm, I literally, wow. I think I'm automatic now programmed to say, wait, which, which, which part of my brain am I using? The, cl <laughs> the closed circuit rebreather part of my brain or the open circuit? And I'm going to assume he's probably open circuit. Right. Being that that's kind of a question that seems like it's a relatively new diver. Yeah. The second question I would ask is, are you certified or not certified? Then I would get into the level of experience that this person has. And then finally, Gus, I think you would agree, what kind of diving are you going to be doing right. primarily? I know that that can change at times, but primarily, what kind of diving are you going to be doing? I would then answer the question based upon that. Finally, after answering the question, somebody's going to bring up budget. But I don't want to answer the question based on budget. I would rather first determine what's the right gear for the purpose of what you're diving for. Yeah. Then you would have to decide, well, are there alternatives based upon, unfortunately, the stuff's expensive, budget. Right. So I wouldn't be able to answer the question right now is what I'm telling well, you the way without gonna, asking a lot more questions of this particular person. The way I'm going to answer it is because I would answer the same thing you said, but just to change it a little bit, I'm going to pretend this is someone who doesn't know how to dive, doesn't have any gear. They just want to get into diving. Okay. All right. So the way I would say I would answer this if someone asked me is I would say go do a try scuba. Like that's the first thing. You don't need to buy any gear or anything up front. Go to your local dive Excellent. shop. I think every single dive Excellent. shop out there will do a try scuba. Sometimes they're free. Sometimes they're $50. Like they change in price uh, depending on what you do. And most places, if you register for the actual class, it will be a free, you know, try scuba. So I would say if what you're looking for is to get into scuba diving, a try scuba will be the best place to start. Absolutely. Yeah. Great comment by Gus. One other thing I will, t I will add to that, that is perfect by the way i totally agree with gus on that is that in general once you do do try scuba and you start looking at bcds which is going to be probably one your starting point i want you to think about back inflation bcds a particularly important for new divers because the back inflation is going to sort of help you get into the proper trim position because it's sure. inflated all along your back so it kind of pushes you forward a little and there are many bcds that are not back inflated yep. but anyway okay awesome we have a bunch of these so let's let's move on uh james gibson uh asked hey i'm not a scuba diver at all and i know nothing about it 
but why would the air be any denser at depth? This is in relationship to, um, yeah. I think, a comment that we made where if you go like over 100 feet, the air feels different when you're breathing. Yes. All right, back to the question. I know the water pressure is going to be pressing down on you and your tank, but the air is inside the tank, and the tank is rigid. So it shouldn't compress the air inside, right? So why would the air be dense? I don't get it. This is a great question an intelligent question and in fact it's actually a question that comes up on a lot of dive professional exams in a roundabout way yep the air inside the tank let's start with that which is a pretty intuitive comment they made does the water pressure affect the air inside the tank no it absolutely does not it does not now that air inside the tank though it's pretty dense already. They compressed that air to squeeze inside that tank. And to the extent of 3,000 pounds per square inch, that is dense. Then what happens is the air starts to come out of the tank. And at first, it goes into a first stage that's connected to the tank valve. So it's slowing down. It's reducing the pressure of that air to what we call an intermediate pressure. Still pretty dense, somewhere in the neighborhood of a, between 130 and 150 pounds per square inch, which is not breathable yet. That's a first stage. It's like, woo, it's like coming out fast and then slow down the air. Then it's gonna go through the lines, flexible lines. At that point, that air is starting to be subject to the outside pressure right then and there that it is becoming dense because the pressure is affecting the air inside those lines and then goes inside of a regulator which slows it all the way down to a breathing pressure so that when you breathe that air in your mouth now it's subject to the environment the yep. ambient pressure of the water it's right. no longer inside of a sealed container that's the best way to think about it and it's denser because of the pressure of the water, um, and it can be and it can be significant. By the way, yep. you're talking about let's just take recreational dive depths. 130 feet is the maximum depth of a recreational diver that took a dive class. That is somewhere in the neighborhood of roughly approximately five atmospheres. If I'm doing my math right. That's right. That is five times more pressure, more pressure on that air than there would be at the surface, creating a denser. And things become dense when it's squeezed. Pressure squeezes it. Therefore, it's denser. That's yep. the best answer I can give. One's inside of a non-flexible container, which is the tank but it leaves that non-flexible container as it goes into your body through that process that I explained. That, that's yeah, that's the what best it is. way I can explain it. And I, I kind of answered this question already in a comment, and I mentioned that if you wanted to learn a lot more about it, to go and check out Boyle's Law, which explains all of that because it depends on temperatures and, like, there's a lot to it, but I said well, just Boyle be careful. Well, Boyle doesn't address temperature. That didn't come along till Charles, and I always that's make true. a funny Charles joke. Law. Are you ready? Can I, can I say my yeah, joke? Go ahead. Boyle should have thought of temperature, right? Because his name is Boyle. Get it? But it's not Boyle's, it's Charles. And <laughs> I always laugh at that joke when I teach science of diving. And right. the funny part about that joke is that helps people remember, oh, Boyle's is the temperature guy. No, he should have been the temperature guy because of his name, but, but it's it was really Charles. Charles. Nobody um, laughs. But, so I, but Gus, I, <laughs> Gus laughed, by the way. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Still laugh to this day. But um, <laughs> I mentioned I did warn James to be careful because next thing he knows, he spent six hours just reading about science of diving, which is pretty cool. But yeah. I'm just saying, just be careful. It's a, it's a rabbit hole, right? Yeah, but, um, but that's a pretty important topic because that air density, we've talked about this in a lot of shows. This is probably where we got it from. The fact that that becomes harder and harder to breathe is a work of breathing, and that can cause a CO2 buildup, it's, yep. right? You're not able to inhale and exhale as easy, so therefore you can't rid the CO2 buildup as easy, which, as you know from previous shows, can contribute to serious 
diving confusion, even possibly death, death, which it has yeah. in some cases that we reacted to yeah. in the past. With so, David Shaw anyway, we can't go through all of that on this show, but right. I, I, I wanted to take it a step further of why that topic is so important. All right, next comment. This was kind of a comment. I converted it into a question because I thought it was interesting. Uh, Bradley Killer 31 asked, is cave diving with a single tank like driving a car with your eyes closed? Well, <laughs> somebody equaled this, by the way, to jumping off a parachute without a actual parachute. If you cave dive with a single tank, a okay? Yeah. In open circuit cave diving, which Gus and I don't do, the rules are super strict. It's actually rules of sixth. You use one sixth of This your will gas. actually come up. Uh, so if you think yes. about using one sixth of a 3,000, of an 80 cubic foot tank, which is 3,000 pounds per square inch, and you're, you're going into a cave at, let's say, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of... Uh, 50 feet maybe per minute and you can only use one six of 3000 psi which is 50 psi i mean if your sack rate is a one which is fair to say that it is then basically in about a little bit of just a couple of minute a few minutes i think you would have used 50 psi and it that could go even faster yeah at depth so think about it one tank if you followed the rules you could only maybe go back 50 maybe 100 feet 100 feet back in that cave yeah well let's go beyond that because i think the question is so and, and why he's limit. talking about driving a car with your eyes closed is because of the danger. And that is true. So let's say it goes 100 feet. 100 say, feet at the most. Let's say you're a peacock and go down to like 50 feet, 60, whatever the entrance is, and then go in like 100 feet to where like the main cave line is. And right then and there, your regulator starts free flowing or something happens and your air source is gone. I'm definitely assuming this is not solo diving on one tank. Right. But how do you come up if you're – low on air or no air from 100 feet inside a cave, which is 50 feet from the surface. Well, without a buddy, you have serious problems. Very, and, very And, and forget about Deco. And by the way, th this is all talking because of the video we reacted to, which was that instructor that went in by himself to Orange Grove in one tank. Makes no sense. Super deep to 150. Yeah. Very, Look, very it, dangerous. I mean, I guess the summary to the comment is there's no way, zero chance that I would ever do that. Ever. Yeah, no, no way. Chance. I wouldn't go 100 feet. I wouldn't go inside of a cave zone on one tank, certainly by myself, ever. Yep. So you mentioned the rule of six, and you know a couple of people commented. I thought it was actually rule of thirds well, instead of six. Well, for cave diving. So, so Michael Lambert and Joshua Underwood, uh, I don't know if – I think they're both subscribers to the channel. They actually answered this question, and they said it's rule of six under some agencies for new divers – as they complete their cave class. Yep. So during training, you plan for six because you're still not certified. But once you're certified, they remove the restriction and you're in one third. So I think that's rules true for some agencies, but I think, and don't shoot me if I'm wrong out there, everybody, because again, mm -hmm. we're trained on closed circuit rebreather diet right. gas plants a little bit different. But I do think under some agencies, the rule of six doesn't go away for open circuit diving. And some it does. I do know that when you're in your internship, your, your beginning part of cave diving is six, and you can graduate to thirds for some. But I could right. have sworn that others, it stays at six. But either way, that's very limiting. Right. One tank is it's crazy. Um, again, all of these are comments and questions about that. Good comments. One of the last videos that we did, which was about the guy that got lost at Orange Grove and almost drowns uh, I mean, recorded this whole thing. Just think about nothing can go wrong. Right. Since we know who this guy is uh, and we didn't share it, but I, I share it with you after the video. Um, somebody asked um, Muncie, I think is his or her name. Are you guys planning to talk to him by chance? And, and they talked about like, maybe you keep it, you know, so it's, it's anonymous, like don't share the name, but you know, have him on the show and ask him well, like, why? Um, I, I will say, though, that I talked to somebody that knows this person. Okay. Um, that's how I know who they are. Um, I I learned that this guy has done dives at Eagle's Nest on a single tank. 
Wow. And recorded the whole thing. And also in some other cave, um, you know, once again on a single tank. And he is completely uninterested from getting certified as a cave diver. And he doesn't want to hear any feedback or anything like that. So the videos would... were removed. So I thought it was interesting. Maybe this is somebody that wants to keep their job. Although somebody said that he's not an instructor yet. He's a dive master, but he's trying to become an instructor. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, the videos were removed. Obviously, he knows that this is not the right thing to do and not setting a good example for the industry. But... Um, this guy has done it several times. I, w I would love to talk to him. And so I'm inviting him to have a conversation. And I what I would promise him is this. It will not be controversial. I've given and Gus ha have given their our opinion on what you're doing. And perhaps I, I, I don't know what it is. You have some other reason why you feel that you can do this for yourself. And maybe you would want to voice that. Um, I get it that you probably wouldn't want to talk to us because I can't think of any logical reason why I would ever want anybody ever to do that. But I would be so curious to hear in your own words, what you're saying is the justification right. for doing that, that I would love to talk to you, but I get it. And I respect that you may not want to do that. I would ask if you don't talk to us <clears throat> that you don't do this anymore. That's right. I would really, really plead with you not to because, honestly, I'm really worried that you're going to die. And it's so bad for the industry. And this is against pretty much everything that I've been taught. And I'm no expert. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not one to hold my, I'm not a cave instructor. But I've never heard any experienced cave instructor say that what you are doing makes any sense whatsoever yeah no that was crazy um a related question to that shelly ingles asked i felt like i was watching a scary movie as well watching the video of the guy lost i don't understand why they don't want to follow the line so let me take this one okay um they don't want to follow the line because there's actually no line from the cavern or from the open water to the cave line the main line of the cave at peacock specifically at Orange Grove, where this video was filmed, the main line is actually pretty far from the entrance. Like, I, it's at least for 200 feet. For a good reason. For, yeah, a, good for reason. a good reason. And what, what we want is not only, you know, just in case somebody is going to knock it out or whatever, uh, you know, destroy the line, but also because we don't want to entice open water divers yes. who go there to, oh, there's a line, let me follow it. So there's Absolutely. actually no line on purpose to not entice open water divers to come in. Right. So what we do is every time we go diving a peacock, uh, for example, at Orange Grove, which we were there two weeks ago, yes, we will run a main line from the, there's like a bunch of locks right by the open water. Uh, we will run a main line from there all the way to the main line of the cave, the goal line, tie there, and then go in and dive. After our dive, we take out our line and take it with us. Yes. So we don't leave a permanent line in there for that reason. So why don't they follow the line because there was no line to follow all the way to the main line. If you watch the video, he eventually makes it to the main line without having a line to the exit. That's why he got lost. Wow. That's why he got lost. Yeah. Which is uh, one of the five key rules of cave diving. You That's always right. have a line basically all the way to the surface Yeah, or to the open water. Uh, one okay. that I want to address really quickly, I don't want people to feel that I'm scared of addressing this. There are many, many comments on the Dave Shaw video that you reviewed, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I want to take full blame for this, where they are pointing out inconsistencies on our review, saying yeah. that yeah, there are. you know they were back there the next day. It wasn't. It was months later. You know All of that stuff. Yeah. That was my fault. That's on me. I, I didn't know that, by the way. Right. I, uh, I like to set up Woody on videos I that he has was no like, oh, idea. Gus was like, it's the next day. I'll, okay. Because, uh, so, because my fault, I too. enjoy... I enjoy getting Woody's for saying honest that. reaction. Thanks for saying that. I had no yeah. idea, guys. I no, and I and I, I mentioned in one of the comments I said we learn a lot from that video. Uh, you know, that we miss a lot of facts and we no longer do that. We research this stuff up front. Yeah. Good point. Uh, and we are valid you know, point. we're we're fact based. So it's a valid comment by yeah, our I, subscriber. Uh, absolutely. And we will hundred percent right. Um, I that was a real reaction on my part. Yeah. I had never seen it before. Right or wrong, I didn't know anything about it, and I just made some incorrect yeah comments For about sure. the facts but 
more importantly, I hope that we did make some good comments about the situation and what not to do and so forth as it related to that particular incident. Yeah, the the technical aspect of why he died, it's 100% accurate. He died of he died of hypercapnia. He eventually collapsed because okay. of CO2 buildup and getting all worked up. But a lot of the details about the dive were not factual. Once again, that's my fault. So, I apologize for that. Um, okay, back to the uh, the comments and questions. Um, this guy, Mike's Big Adventures is the name of the channel. Um, it says, holy crap, that was stressful. He's talking about the instructor that got lost at Orange Grove. I'm not yet a cave diver, but I cannot imagine being so flippant about safety and still being alive. Instructor? Question mark. I hope I never have this guy for anything. He is as bad, if not worse, than the guy that taught the rescue, the stress and rescue class that we reacted to. Yeah. Maybe this is the same guy. It's not the same guy. I'm going to give you an update on the rescue guy, but go ahead. No, I don't, ha I don't have much more of a comment. I would agree with that comment. I mean, that is an embarrassment to our industry. Yeah. If this guy, as an instructor, is going into caves that he knows nothing about without being cave trained by himself on a single tank. The comment is a good comment. Yep. I'm not trying to continue to bash this guy down, but it's so bad for our industry that I'm glad somebody's making a comment like that. I agree with your comment. That's let's my reaction. Move, let's move into the rescue guy, the worst instructor we've ever seen. Uh, Martin Steiner asked, where can I report this guy? Is there a central web web page or a website or a portal or something that all agencies use to that I can report this guy? Yeah. On? Yeah. Is there? Um, I don't think there's a central. There's place. not like a central. Maybe. That's a good idea, though. I, that's why I left this question. I'm like, well, it's a big, like you got to be careful like because the, the reason why it's we don't want some public uh, place right. because the, there is a process that dive agencies have if somebody is alleged to have made a violation. And I want people to have what's called due process. Yes. Most of them are fair, so they would want to hear about it and give an opportunity to review it, give an opportunity for the person who has been accused of the violation to give feedback. And many, most dive agencies have pretty reasonable remedial uh, ed, con ed to give somebody the opportunity not to do that again. Right. So I don't I don't necessarily agree with an automatic public place to report this. This yeah. one was outrageous and we have reported it to his dive agency. I want you to Gus did that. Plot twist. Yes. So a lot of you, thank you so much, reach out to me with the name of the guy, the agency, like everything. You guys are awesome and found all this information online. Um, I reached out to the agency, Nowi. So I'll, I'll disclose what agency okay. um, they told me about. And Nowi said, this guy has not been an instructor for us since like 2010 or something like that. Like we have no affiliation with him. Um, on his website, for the instructor, he still claims that he's a now instructor. He's not a now instructor for any other agency. So I'm not okay. sure if he's teaching this rescue class under any other agency because he's not publicly advertising it. The only one is now and now he says, we don't know who this guy is. He's not with us. So, so we that's don't know. kind of a dead end. We have no idea. Uh, we try to report it. We try to do the right thing uh, all privately, um, but um, it just didn't work out. Okay. Uh, back to the guy that went in alone into the cave. Somebody asked, Bingo Rock 16, isn't Never Dive Alone also part of the rules of cave diving? No, it's not. It's not part of the five rules, but we definitely don't. We cave subscribe dive solo. to it. We, yes. I, Gus and I, and, and most of the group of cave divers that we dive with, we don't cave dive alone. However, many cave divers cave dive alone. And are trained to cave dive alone. They yeah. go through, ex we all are actually, yep. and are preparing to deal with problems by themselves. So, no, it is not a rule of cave diving that you cannot cave dive alone. But for somebody inexperienced, not cave certified, diving on a single tank without a line... Oh my goodness. They shouldn't even be in the cave. They I mean, they should never ever have gone into a cave. They should really probably not even go into a cavern until they're cavern certified. That's right. All right, Jay Hammer. 
ask. Awesome reaction video, and he's talking about the video I did uh, reacting to the movie Sanctum. Okay. Uh, we need, we so need a realistic cave diving movie. I just wonder, was there any cave diving instructors consulted while creating this movie, and why not? Or maybe regular safe cave diving would be too boring? He's asking, didn't somebody pass away filming this? Somebody else asked the same question, but it was like in the same video. So I want to answer this. Okay. One. Um, there were actually dozens of dive consultants uh, and divers um, on the movie. If you go to Sanctum's IMDb page, there's a full cast. You can read the um, you know the the names of everyone who was involved uh, in there. The story goes like this. So this is you know a little bit of what I've learned after I did this review. Okay. Um, James Cameron, who created the movie Sanctum, uh, it's actually a cave diver. He got certified at Ginny cool. in Florida, where we dive all the time, with Jill Heinerth mm. was his uh, cave instructor. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? That's pretty damn good. And uh, Wes Kyles. Wow. Right? So this is before Wes Kyles died, So who's a total legend, by the way. Um, so he got certified. He fell in love with cave diving. He was like, I got to make a movie about this. So what, after the training, he goes to Jill and says, what is the craziest thing you think could happen during a cave dive? So Jill and Wes started thinking about it. And it's like, I don't know, I guess breathing from the air pockets in the ceiling would be like a crazy thing. And James Cameron is like, okay, show me. So they went at Ginny through the eye and into the gallery, which you're okay. familiar with. The gallery is like a big open space within the cave at Ginny. Uh, and it's a pretty flat ceiling. Yeah. So Wes Kyles was below Jill. Jill took all her gear off, and Wes Kyle was blasting air oh, wow. into the ceiling of the cave, and Jill was breathing from the air pocket. She did this for like a whole minute straight. Wow. And James Cameron was like, that's awesome. That needs to be in the movie. That's actually the ending of the movie. Somebody does this. Okay. Right? So they were legit legends involved in the making of Sanctum. One of them was actually um, a girl from Australia named Agnes Milauka, I guess is how you read her name. Um, badass cave explorer. This girl, if you don't, if you if you don't know about her, she laid thousands of feet of new line in caves in Australia and Florida. Wow! So check this out. I, I pulled this from her Wikipedia page. In 2010, when living in Florida, she moved to Florida to cave dive. Okay. She laid over 4,000 meters. Mm. That's 13,000 feet of line across a number of cave systems. The most significant of which was Baptizing Spring, which is also called Mission Spring, in August of 2010. We've never to, dove that. No. In August, it, it, and listen to this. In August of 2010, together with James Tolan, she made the connection between Peacock Springs and Baptizing Springs, adding over 3,000 meters, 9,800 feet of passage. Wow. That's amazing. Total legend. She actually died. And that's to answer the question, did somebody pass away while filming this? Not while filming the movie, but she actually died exploring caves in South Australia. She was 29. Man. Super young, super amazing diver. You do hear about a lot of deaths from the cave explorers, by the way. She was a cave See, explorer. So she was alone. She went through a restriction, a no-mount restriction, meaning she took off all her gear off. Oh, wow. Yeah, went through it. We don't do that. I just I, want you to know. So I don't know the, the whole story, but apparently she got separated from her tanks and drowned. So, you know, that is something to bring up. I, I, we maybe have brought it up before. When you're exploring New Cave, that's even another level of cave training. Like there's almost different levels of experience and training within cave diving. That's right. We don't do that. No. We're simply diving already explored, known, mapped out caves that already have line laid. We're not cave explorers. So... Yeah, that's the level of cave diving that we are at and that I plan on staying at yep. personally. So, so just to answer that question, a bunch of legit divers were involved um, and they still made it Hollywood. I mean, because if you think about it, ho actual cave diving is boring in terms of watching it if you're not a cave diver. Like we just went to see Ancient Caves, me and Woody, which Loved. is a movie about legit diving, legit cave diving, best divers in the world uh, in the movie and best caves in the world too, mm. I mean. Gorgeous. Those caves in the Avacos are amazing. You've been there, yes. obviously. Um, but uh, for me, like I was almost crying watching this yeah. movie 
But then there's all the people that came and got confused because they thought they were going to see Godzilla versus King Kong, right? They really were, by the way. They asked us that question. <laughs> and the I, I just see all these kids walking with their mom with their Godzilla or King Kong right. t-shirts, and I'm like, wrong movie. Are you here for a cave diving movie? Um, so, so these people were bored out of their mind because it's so effortless and perfect to watch these people cave dive. Yep. Like for me, I'm just watching. I'm like, I'm never nope. going to do that. Now, they're the best cave this divers. Is I mean, amazing. the main one, Brian Kickuck in the movie, was, he could be, I, I like to say, one of the greatest cave divers in the world. Oh that's for God. sure. But it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, yeah, if you want to watch a legit cave diving movie, look at Ancient Caves. If it's playing where you're at, go check it out. It's not being streamed. I know the director, Jonathan Bird, he mentioned that if it's up to him, it will never be on a small screen. He wants it to be on an IMAX how it should be. And that IMAX in Birmingham where we saw it, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Amazing. All right. Uh, back to um, the questions. Lucas Smith commented or qu or asked, I don't know anything about diving, but what was that squeaking sound that Yuri Lipsick that, that you reviewed? Uh, was w was that his breathing at the end? Is he suffocating? I don't know if you remember. He was like... Yeah, we questioned that, if you recall. It sounded like to me that the gas was so dense that it was really having to force in inhaling to squeeze that air out of the regulator and it was causing that noise yeah. i don't know for sure what that noise was but it sounded like a serious work of breathing issue based upon the density of the air squeezing through part of the regulator i it was terrible to hear it sounded like such labored breathing which certainly um would contribute to a hypercapnia that's right um, back to the questions, orange juice, there's a user called orange juice. He commented in, or he or she commented in multiple of our videos. So shout out to orange juice. I like orange juice. Thanks orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said, or she said, jigging with Jordan posted a video on hospital hold today. Found it extremely irritating. He kept calling it a cave. This is a sinkhole in Florida, by the way. It's like hot sun grotto. It looks pretty much the same. It's the same thing. Well, does it have a loss of light anywhere in it? If you are all the way to the bottom, all the way in the corner, yes. Okay. But he is diving at 10 feet and saying that he's oh. diving in a cave. Okay. All right. So he's diving in a sinkhole, but in a sinkhole. Sounds exactly. like it's open water, no overhead environment. Also, he wears a full face mask and he's hand finning. Like you can see him swimming like that the yeah. whole time. Doubt he has any spare mask. Doubt he has any proper training to deal with an emergency situation. I'm not trying to bash the guy. I enjoy his content. Just like, just think he should keep from free diving, or sh he should keep to free diving because he's a free diver. Uh, he does a lot of spear fishing in his channel and stuff. Uh, or go get some proper training and practice with his equipment off camera for a while. Well, there you go. That was how. It's so funny that she ended with go get the proper training. Yeah. I actually encourage him to continue diving and get training. Sounds right. like he enjoys diving. We could probably, or instructors could probably help him enjoy that experience a lot more and a lot safer. So she ended with what I was going to say. Go get some training. I already, I already reviewed a video from Hospital Hole, so I said I'm not going to do another one. It's okay. the same dive site. I, you know, The guy who recorded it there kept calling it a cave. I kept rectifying because they never went into the no light zone. Uh, and I went into a few more details with that uh, on that video as well. I talked about the hydrogen sulfide layer. I talked about everything. Um, however, I posted a comment on the Jigging with Jordan channel saying like, hey, man, you know, I noticed these things or whatever. I provided some feedback and he deleted the comment. Okay. So I'm like, OK, then it's on. So I recorded a reaction video okay. and it's coming out in a couple weeks um, on okay. this video. All right. Matt P. This is going to be you're not going to like this question. But we have to talk about it. We don't run away from challenges. No. Matt P. I want to see some videos of Gus and Woody cave diving using their DPVs once they're certified. We're really bad. <laughs> Listen, we are. First of all, what I'm going to say is I do like that question. We're going to do a video soon or a podcast, podcast yeah. about our DPV training. The instructor was excellent. Gus and I were terrible. And we did not get through the class. We nope. need more training for sure. I had some problems with my gear. I'm not making an excuse, but it, it hurt on it. But honestly, both of us yeah, we had, need more we had training. And we are going to spend four or five days with a world-class, top-notch cave 
instructor trainer. We reached out to him and said, That's we right. need help. We're terrible. We blamed everything uh, rightfully on ourselves so that we can properly cave dive with our DPVs. So That's we the stink. beauty about this sport. We stink. Yeah, we I failed. Stink. I mean, I was terrible. It was nothing but a mess. Both of us were just, we're not ready for it, and we need more training. Yeah. I mean, we didn't quit the class or anything. We finished the class. We just didn't pass. No, we shouldn't um, have passed, though. We had so we many des- problems. Deservingly so. Yeah, we were a mess. We, that, uh, that we didn't pass, so we didn't get certified on the DPVs. I need to learn. We need um, to be taught. We we need to disclose this on a podcast, so let's not. Right, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> say anything. But we're we're going to get instruction on how to yes. properly dive with a DPV. Yeah, and we need practice. We certainly sure. do. Um, we had buoyancy and trim issues, which we shouldn't have had, irregardless of whether or not we were on a DPV. But we were we were just a mess. That happens sometimes. So yeah, we're uh, humbled and we'll. We'll go get more training so we can do it right. Then we'll show you a video. I don't think we want to show anybody a video of us right now on them. (laughs) Right. There's a couple of videos of us on DPVs, but they are inside a cavern. They weren't inside a cave, which is a big open space, and it looks like we know what we're doing. But uh, (laughs) we know we're we're gonna we'll get some video. I know for a fact this particular instructor trainer does video you while training you. So we'll have video of us and. um, our goal is to improve and learn yeah. and do it correctly and safely. This next, this next question is actually super big and open-ended, so I'm going to answer it quickly, and you can add what you want after that, uh, Woody. Captain B, P, and J. I don't know why not P, B, and J, but anyway, B, P, and J. What is the first step to getting into cave diving? All right, so super quick. We recorded an episode of the podcast called Cave Diving, I think it's called, um, and on that episode, Mike Young is on that episode. Brian Boucher is there. Doug Ebersol. We have a lot of, there's five cave divers total in there. And we talk about that process in extensive detail. But just to summarize it, uh, the way I, I got into cave diving was I became an open water diver. Uh, then after that, I started diving rebreathers. And then after that, after getting a bunch of experience with a rebreather, I did my cave diving training. So that's kind of the progression that you do it. But the cave diving training, even that was a progression itself. I got certified to be a cavern diver first. And then uh, another level in between called tech light, which is you can dive on the main line, but you don't do any jumps or navigation or anything. And then eventually full cave dive. So every one of those levels carries like a number of dives and more experience. And it's kind of like martial arts where you get a belt, get a bunch of experience, then move on and move on and move on. Okay. Good answer. Yep. Nothing to add to that. All right. Uh, Sir Franklin, um, this guy was pretty upset about our, uh, about a description that I talked about on, um, on a video that I did about Jacob's, um, Jacob's hole, uh, or Jacob's, what's it called? Jacob's hole, Jacob's well in Florida. Uh, and I was talking about how, you know, people, when they are deep and they panic, they die. You know, if you don't have the right training and all of that. So he said, you discount too much the fact that different people might react to things differently. For some, panic and adrenaline rush might set in much easily than they would do to you. Because maybe I said, like, I can dive in this hole and I wouldn't even get panicked. But there was a subsequent conversation about this where I was just saying that, look, I don't get panicked. Not because I'm a a badass ninja, but because I'm trained. Like, when you have the training and you're inside a cave, you don't panic. That's what you train for. You're prepared for it. Well, my my comment to that would be, I kind of get where he's coming from. I don't think people know how they will react to a particular situation until they're in that situation. Because particularly when you're deep and diving, it's going to be different every time. It's very easy to to sit back right now and play quarterback on how we think we would react when you're 300 feet underwater and have a serious confusion, a CO2 hit, maybe you're narc, maybe you're breathing down your gas quickly, maybe you're caught, maybe you're trapped, maybe you're having a gear problem. I have no idea how I would react. I know this much though. The more I train and practice those skills, the better I believe I will be able to handle that if it ever really does happen. I don't think anybody knows though, until you're in that situation. That's what that's I right. think. Yep. That's right. All right. Mo, uh, Bofatis, I, I guess is his last name. Awesome videos. Always. You guys are the perfect pair for diving videos. 
So that's oh, cool. that's a good compliment. Good content, good guest uh, video content. I'm in Colorado. Can you guys do a heads up more out or further out? And that's because when we released the episode about Donald Zeroni, we said in two days we're going to be in Birmingham and this guy was oh, like, I see come him. on. Like, give, oh, oh, he give wanted me to come little, with us out. Yeah, yeah maybe we give will. Give me a little. Okay, um, that's a fair comment because I'd like to have some people come to different yes. things we're at. Uh, it says, it would be cool to meet you guys. I'll drive 14 hours to learn from you. Um, how did cave diving start? Who who made the equipment? I mean, we're going to Florida soon. Are we, Talk about equipment failures. Yeah. We're going shark tooth hunting soon. Uh, and yeah, we're going shark tooth hunting in uh, North Megalodon Carolina. Megalodon shark tooth hunting on our rebreathers. That trip is coming up. I can't yeah. wait to do a video about that, by the That's way. That's going to be awesome. Because we got to bring down a DPV, <laughs> a small one, so we can turn it backwards to blow the sand underwater so we can find the... The millions teeth. of year old megalodon teeth. Well, I, I've not done this before. It's Either be one cool. of us have done this before. Yep. And we'll be in um, Lauderdale by the Sea at the beginning of May. At my hotel. Well. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that I, I own so. Ocean Treasure. Ocean Treasure L B T S dot com. Ocean Treasure L B T S dot com. I have set up that hotel for divers. It's magnificent. It's right in Lauderdale by the yes, sea. We're we'll coming. be there. Uh, we're coming. When are we going to be there? Uh, the first week of May, May first 4th through May. 7th. We're diving every day. It's going to be awesome. So we'll be there. Ocean Pretty treasure. deep wrecks, though. So I, I would I would advise if people want to come and dive with us, you can, but we're going to be going deep. Yeah, you'll need to be normoxic or even trimix on yeah. some of these that we're yeah. doing. Uh, I, think the, I think the shallowest wreck we're going to hit is 170 feet. Yeah, so you got to be careful. Don't, 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 don't dive unless you're trained for yeah. that with us. Don't dive with us there. Uh, but there is a chance that I'll be in um, Chattanooga on April 23rd for Ancient Caves again. I want to oh, see cool. the movie again. Yeah. And cool. Megan wants to go, and a bunch of other people want to go from the shop. So I might, uh, might go there because it's pretty close from here. It's about an hour, an hour yeah. and a half. So, all right. Uh, so this guy wants us to talk about equipment failure. Maybe we can do this in the future as well. So thank you for the shout out and okay. uh, for the com for the comments. All right, Corals of Houston, do you stream as well? Hell of a setup you got there. He looks at our setup and yeah. he's like, why don't you guys stream? We will for the live giveaway. After they comment, once again, subscribe to Dive Talk in this, uh, in this video. Ryan D., there was a cave dive rescue of a Thai football team. Were you aware of this? The Thai soccer team that got trapped in a cave? Of course. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. Everyone, I think even my mom knows about this. Obviously, really, really big event. Um, and their coach a couple of years ago in Thailand. I'm curious as to what you think of the difficulty level of that dive. I'm talking about the rescue. And is there only a select few divers that can do this? I think so. That is called sump diving. Forget it. That's I a whole nother level. So what happens with a sump diving cave is you do want to do this, it, right? You you want to do sump with the right people. I'll do yeah. sump diving, like Mike Young, people that are experienced with it. Sump diving is just as simple as this. I want you to picture your toilet and the U-shaped pipe in the back of it. The top part of the pipe may not have water in it, but on the very bottom of it is the bottom of the U where the water just sits. And you know what sits inside that bottom of the U? Any sediment is just going to sit there. So when you are sump diving, you may be going and dragging through a dry part of the cave, then have to get all your gear on to get through the wet part of the cave to only come back out again back into the dry part of the cave. And in that wet part of the cave, these are tight areas. There's a lot of flow, a lot of water movement, and there could be debris so the visibility is gone zero it's zero it's really really another level of cave diving i don't know why people do this and you need <laughs> to be highly experienced and to do a rescue yeah. through sump wow no way are we even remotely no. close to being qualified no. for that i think we could sump dive i i don't think i want to i it doesn't sound enjoyable to me the dry caving part is the horrible part no, i, I know you that. like to do love that dry caving. i know davy Giano, our team uh, mate loves to do that i have no interest on yeah. that dragging myself through mud no nope. but i think the simple answer to this but, question is yeah. Oh yeah, there only a few people were qualified to handle a rescue right. like that Those through guys a were sump total studs to only a few and yeah. that's who handled it, by the way, the few that were qualified to do so. Oh, boy. Here's another one. Uh, this one is based on our conversation with Georgia Hauserman. 
about big free fan, breathers. Lover. Georgia said, we asked her this question, should you get into open circuit tech before going into rebreathers or can you just go from recreational open circuit to rebreathers? And she oh, said, well, which, I, w- I went from recreational me too, to which we agreed open to, cir- uh, to close circuit, which we agreed to. We said, absolutely. Don't waste your time on open circuit tech. Go to rebreathers. Yeah. Um, that's what I did. Okay. And you so, did. so this guy, Daniel G said, what all capitals. Okay. With a bunch of exclamation points. Um, respectfully, if the only open circuit technical diving you've ever done, are course based bailout drills, you will not be prepared to execute a competent open circuit bailout when you're frightened. Well, a rebreather course may introduce you to open circuit technical diving, but effortless competence does not come from an introduction, it comes from practice. The last person I met who gave me the advice you just spouted died at the bottom of Lake Huron. Um, you know, I actually think that most of the closed circuit divers that I know went from open circuit recreational to closed circuit rebreather diving. And I don't know who this is. We're entitled to your opinion. The training that we do and that we both received and give to be a closed circuit rebreather diver is very extensive. Way more than any That's right. open circuit. And it only allows you to, at the first level, to dive to 130 feet and requires a lot of dives before you can get to Normoxic to go to 200 feet. So I just have to disagree with that being a blanket comment that, yeah, you know, you're going to die and, and, and so forth. I mean... Um, I don't know any facts. I don't know if that per- how that person Almost was trained. Almost everyone we know is proof it was, that you can go from open circuit yeah, recreational. Most, to most people have yeah. done that that I know and are fine, right? I'm not saying jump from open circuit to normoxic CCR diving. You wouldn't yeah, be allowed to anyway. Right. So I don't know. I don't really so follow guy, that logic unless yeah. he's not a closed circuit diver. That could be the case. Yeah, this guy Daniel, he comes from a DIR agency like GUE on you know on the water team, whatever. Yeah. Uh, who are, to his who are very very good at the open circuit tech stuff. Um, but he did say that he doesn't think his agency is the best and everybody's uh, inferior. He's just saying like I think you guys are wrong. All I wanted to add to your answer was that. We do bail out a lot, like oh, in classes, definitely. without classes, right? We're, we'll just, as part of our cave, that we'll be like, you guys want to bail out today? Yeah, recalculate, just to practice. recalculate our sack rates. Just to practice, right? Uh, we bail out last weekend from 1,800 mm-hmm. feet without DPVs, right? And open circuit as yeah. part of the class. Um, I've bailed out for real before inside a cave dive. Um, well, we bailed out in the class with the DPVs. Yeah, in the class, that's what I was saying. swim them out. Yep. Uh, swim them out uh, on open circuit, bail out. I bail out during my normoxic class, and I know that during the full trimix or hypoxic class, we're going to bail oh, yeah. out from 280 feet. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like we dive rebreathers and we never touch the bail out stuff. But I, but I we do it often. We yeah, do it a lot. I don't think it's about us. I think it's a comment in general. Yeah. So let's not focus it on us. Let's focus it on is that an appropriate way to – trained to go from open circuit diving to closed circuit rebreather diving and i say absolutely i think if it's trained correctly yep he can shoot me on a comment if he wants here i think that closed circuit rebreather diving is safer than open circuit diving if properly trained i think i have many more options than open circuit divers and we can have a discussion on that at a later point that's right um so Linda, Linda Kim, watched the video from that worst instructor we've ever seen on the rescue class, and she said, Disturbing. someone randomly turning off my air used to be one of my worst irrational fears in diving, but maybe it's not so irrational after all. Well, it's one thing that he turned it off one time, but after they su- – this was my point in the review, yeah, in the reaction. After he turned it off, and they managed to get their air back on to do that over and over and over again to them? When would that ever happen? That's just dumb. Right? When would you be able to recover out of air, get your buddy's regulator, and then it happens again? And yet again, I think he actually did it three or four times. Yeah. That's just ego at that point. That's irrational. Uh 
behavior. I don't yep. know how much more time we have. Do we have a lot? Uh, maybe just a few more. Of these? I want to keep these to an hour. So we have a few more minutes, but we only have two more. To Let's go. do it. This these are very one, good comments, by the way, everybody. Thank yeah. you. They're this, excellent. This next one, um, it's actually a little bit long. So I'm going to read this one. I want to read the whole thing. So this was sent to us uh, on a private message. I hope Brian is okay with this, with disclosing this information. Uh, his name is Brian Becker, and this is what he sent us through Facebook, by the way. Uh, like us on Facebook, and you can send us, send us messages and suggestions and all of that. But Brian Becker said this. Just wanted to drop a message of thanks for sharing your information about diving with the rest of us who are interested, novice, or just curious about diving. In August last year, our town suffered a tragedy where two teenage boys lost their lives in a drowning incident in the Illinois River that borders our community. After we searched the river for two days, we were able to lo locate these brothers. As the fire chief of Beardstown Fire Department, I needed to assess the accident and decided to push forward with formation of a dive recovery team. This team is comprised of volunteer firefighters and police officers. We're currently in an ERD class and will receive emergency response diver certification by the end of August of this year, 2021. Nearly a year from the day that we lost these two young men. Between classes and while we have downtime, several of us like to surf the internet for information and videos about diving, and I happen to come across your YouTube channel. After watching the Dave Shaw Critique episode, I had to share it with my dive team members. Before we started classes back in October of last year, most of my team had very limited, and he said this in all caps, experience with scuba diving. And most of us have become scuba sponges, trying to absorb anything that we can get our hands on to learn about all different aspects of this dive world. Thank you very much for expressing your thoughts about that recovery, which you did, Woody. Uh, and the other videos that you have on your channel, your channel has become one of my favorites because of your insight, your knowledge, and your expertise. Please keep up the great work. Be safe. And thanks again, Brian Becker, oh. Beardstown Fire and Ambulance Chief. This made made my day. First of all, yep. thank you very much. I love your attitude of just wanting to learn. We continue to learn. I learn from my students. I always say I typically learn as much from them, I think, as they learn from me. And then... Being uh, that he sounds like he's doing a lot of um, public type of diving, there are public safety diver classes that are offered by public safety dive instructors. Different agencies have programs and that are set up for that that teach you how to handle either recoveries or rescues for the public, for fire departments or police departments or crime scenes and so forth. So that's available and uh, as all I can say is I'm really glad that you reached out to us. If you have any specific questions, I would love to have your comments about those because if we don't know about it, we would make it a point to go out and find experts that could help you. Maybe you and your group are struggling with something or want to do something better. I bet within our community we could find somebody that could help answer those questions for you if they're not readily available it sounds like they're not readily available instructors with that level of knowledge right there in your community but we would love to help and that's another great use of dive talk anybody that may have specific questions we if we don't know the answers we know a lot of experts out there and we have we'll a big seek network. those out i think you and i were talking about this before yeah. that we would love to be a resource to help you or anybody else that has very specific questions like that not necessarily from us but we could find the right person for you of course yep and uh, yeah thank you for your service shout out to the beardstown fire and ambulance yeah, department awesome. awesome uh job you guys and anything right that you need from us to discuss to share happy to do that if you want it to be more of a private thing we'll do a webinar or whatever sure. uh happy to discuss that and if you want it public i'm um, happy to release on the channel but Great job, guys. Thank you. Um, very encouraging words. And I hope that you guys kill it on that emergency diver response course that is coming up in August. Very cool. Yeah. Hope you guys do awesome. All right. And we're going to wrap it up with this uh, comment from Gregor Triple X. Okay. I'm going to assume that Triple X is related to Vin Diesel. No comment. <laughs> Instead of, uh, you know, whatever, something else. Whatever. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> so Gregor X, X, X says, Dive Talk. Where are the thousands of subscribers you guys deserve? It's wow. a matter of time. Yeah. 
we will if you if you could help us with that we would appreciate <laughs> it we're we're really relatively new how long have we been now gus doing these a few months now i feel like we started the channel like a year ago but we didn't really t- i didn't really take it seriously until a few months ago so a few months ago and yeah. we're up to uh how many subscribers we have a thousand and eight so thousand and eight subscribers <laughs> so we're getting there and hopefully folks like you making very nice comments like that to us are encouraging and if you would spread the word we greatly appreciate it absolutely we appreciate all of you guys for watching if you watch this whole thing uh hopefully you'll learn something i try to answer as many questions as possible all the other ones i try to answer them on the comments like if you make a comment on a video i go in there and i answer it but this would give you know woody an opportunity as well and for us to kind of interact and answer all of these but we really appreciate all of the subscribers and all of the views once again if you want one of these slides, we're going to give them away for free. Uh, just leave a comment below, like the video, and leave a comment below that says subscribe to Dive Talk. And, so the um, comment itself, you have to type in subscribe to Dive Talk. That's, that's your right. comment that you need to leave. That's right. And if you are you know, concerned about it, I'm going to leave it on the description as well. You can copy and paste it if you want, just to know that you want one of these. If you already have a bunch of lights, uh, you don't need one. You know, We appreciate the support. Do you want to hold them up? Can they see them? Yeah, up? I think... Uh, I think it's worth them seeing. These are really awesome lights. Four of these, they're awesome. By the way, uh, last week, somebody took a couple of these, not these specific ones, but these models, to over 200 meters on a world record world record wow. uh, attempt. Uh, they took, I think it was the 710, this, this one right here. They took this one, which I rated 250 meters, by okay. the way. And they took the 630, which is my main cave light, this guy right here, mm, uh, which right I already have rigged and all of that. It's pretty awesome. Uh, they took these two lights over 200 meters. I think it was like 250 or something. Perfect. They worked, even though they're rated for 150 meters. Very they nice. were perfectly all the way to the bottom, and they came back, and they're awesome. So Excellent. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to give away these lights. I don't know which one. Maybe we'll start with like, the big one. What do you think? Yeah. yeah give away this think, one. Look, they're all good. Pretty cool. They're all different purposes. and They're all awesome. Um, and uh, this one is a D511. So if you want to look into it online, they are pretty awesome. We're going to give this one away and then the other three. Uh, again, once we hit every 500 subscribers. I'm going to do a review we'll do on them uh, yes. soon. I used them underwater, so that's coming up. And they're, I, t- I already told you, the overall review is going to be very good. I yes. would absolutely recommend any one of these lights or buy any one of these lights. But I'm going to do a really objective review and compare it to other lights that I've used. Yep. And that I do use, in fact. Yep. And once again, if you're curious about some of the other gear that we use, along with our lights and uh, everything else, um, look at the description of this video. It says, here's the gear that we use. Once again, everything is listed there with all the manufacturer you know, links, so you can go and learn more from it. But uh, other than that, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you for being a subscriber of the channel. Hopefully, you get one of these lights. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you on the next one when we pull the winner. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.